Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. So praise God. Let's welcome our online audience. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes. We hear that. They love you. And you know, be received and accepted. And we're grateful that you're a Facebook Live audience right now. Make sure that you share that message in the congregation. And even if you're watching, you can just hit that share button, share Jesus. And then also our YouTube uh, channel. Grateful that you're also here. And um, check out Living Faith Church and follow all of us at Living Faith SA. Amen? Amen. And invite a couple of friends again and share the message. Do you have your message notes? You're going to need them. Amen. If you don't, raise your hand high. They did a great job of handing those out. My brother, right there, keep your hand up. They'll give those to you. If you have them on this side, thank God for the great, great, great people. Amen. And thank God for the blessing of God upon you today. Amen. Amen. We're in a series called Best Summer Ever. We love summer. Get to sleep in a little bit, get to relax, chillax a little bit more. But we, we, we don't want to take a vacation from our faith. Amen. We want to stir up our faith that we even during this season that we're on mission, we have gratitude. We designed a day called Serve Sunday, Serve Saturday that will come upon us just in August, right? Coming upon us in a couple of weeks. And you heard about that and follow us and you'll hear more about that today. But we want to have a life on mission today. And so we want good news for a change. Isn't there enough bad news? And so something about good news, uh, it desires that. People desire it. It lights them up. I, I love the newscasts that show good news, the feel-good story at the end of the broadcast at 530, the world news. But, but that's not enough, amen, because they give you all the, front, the bad news at the front end. How many people have died? What's going on? This political person's against this political and, and enough of bad news. I believe God's people need to bring good news, right? Amen. And so there's nothing better than Isaiah prophesying about how beautiful that your feet would be when you bring good news, right? And so it changes people. Isaiah 52 on the screen, either in your uh, your devices or uh, right there on the screen's easier right there. It says this in the Message Bible. How beautiful are the mountains of the feet of the messengers. And the messengers would run over the mountain in the Old Testament because there was something that would flash on a screen and alert you or buzz you or ding you. They didn't have that in the Old Testament. They would bring the messengers that this was going on. And there was good news that was brought over the mountains. And the breaking news that all is well, proclaiming good times. Announcing salvation. Tell Zion, which are the people of God, that our God reigns, your God reigns. What a wonderful declaration, amen, to make. Your God reigns, amen. Why don't you tell your neighbor right now with me right now. Tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, your God reigns. Tell second choice, that person you didn't want to talk to. We all have them, right? That guy next to you. Tell him that second choice. It looks like you need some church. My it looks sister. like you need some church. I'm glad you're in I church. know I need church. Amen. Come on, turn him out. You can be you know, no one no one do anything. Wait, they'll wait for you in the parking lot. Is that okay? <laughs> Good news. What a beautiful display that we would have on our feet of action, that we're moving forward, that we're active in faith, but we're bringing good news, not bad news today. We have some good, good news, amen? amen. And, and you have to share it. You're supposed to share it. It's not supposed to be kept over. You're reached by God to reach other people. Yeah. Did you know that? God yeah. reaches you so he can reach other people. Yeah. Our God yeah. reigns, amen, with peace. Yeah. When, when, when you arrive with the good news, the joy arrives because you display joy in your life. Salvation arrives because you display salvation that you've been born again. Right? You have to have a life on mission today. Because you have to remember, all of you that are really saved in this room, that you and I were once lost, right? Amen. We were far away from God. The Bible says that he's called us out of darkness, out of the light, and put us into marvelous light. Amen. And you might display the reflection of God. So if somebody prayed for you. Somebody spoke to you because you weren't you, you weren't born again just by not knowing. Somebody had to bring you to church. Somebody had to invite you to church. Yes. And so you should do the same. You should tell someone about Jesus. It, it, there's nothing more exciting than sharing the good news with people. Amen. Amen. Than inviting people. Come and see what Jesus has done. We, 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 we just heard this past week of a creative outreach that we're going to do as a church family. And some of y'all know Coleto Rodriguez. And his story is this, that uh, 
uh, he was born again, he was saved, and he became this nationally known comedian. And he's still kind of known, and some of you say, who's that? You know I mean, but you're not trendy, amen? <laughs> <laughs> Cleto's well known by people, especially in San Antonio. Cleto came a couple of years ago to our church during, a, I believe, a New Year's Eve or Christmas Eve service. It was great. But he's coming back on a Sunday morning, August 18th. We got him. Amen. He's going to come. Yeah. Here's what I'd like you to do. We ought to do everything within our midst, except short of sin, to bring people to Jesus. Amen. And so what we're going to do on Sunday morning is not have church. We have church unusual. Can be a little bit different. He's going to do a stand-up comedy act on stage. It's going to be a blessing. But here's the deal. Cleto has been through this journey. He's, he talked to me this week and he said, you know what, I used to do these circuits and he's done, he does clean comedy, he's always safe. But he said he went through COVID and almost died. He was, he was very, the system was very compromised. He's been through a journey. He almost felt like he went through the desert to come out resurrected again amen. and to be able to proclaim God's peace. And then some of y'all, amen, some of y'all which were so kind, you've all then told our church. He was on social media, and some, he put up a post. He said, hey, I'd like to come to churches. Do you all know some churches to recommend? And there you go again, recommending Living Faith Church because of you. Amen. <laughs> Leto gave us a call, and we scheduled him for August 18th. So Leto, he's going to make This is how you need to invite your friends and family. They may not come hear a pastor that's kind of boring preach, but they'll come saying, I come to my church, there's this comedian that's going to clip. Oh, yeah, he used to be on the news. I remember his segments. He was funny. They'll come and hear him, and you know what Clipto's going to do? He's going to hook bait them. Yeah. And he's going to hook them. <laughs> he's going to he's gonna make them laugh, and we'll laugh together. But then he's going to present the gospel very powerfully. And share Jesus with people. This is a perfect opportunity on August 18th. Warm them up, bring them before that, but if, especially get them here on August 18th. It's a free venue. Thank God. He'll share the gospel. People will come to Jesus. This is what you've been believing for. Let's do it. Amen. Big time. Right? Everybody? Amen. Amen. So we resolve to do that. God expects us because we've been saved by grace to share Jesus. And let me back up a moment. Say, well, you're going to do that at church. And, you know, you're supposed to be holier than thou. And that. No, we do everything um, short of sin so we can get people to Christ. Amen. Amen. That's right. We're not going to, you know, kill any cats up here and do any, you know, rub blood all over. No, we're not going to do that. Amen. But we will bring a comedian in Jesus' name. Right, everybody? Amen. So thank God. I want to give you three bullet points on how to share Jesus with people, okay? These are real practical. You can take notes, um, and if you if you want to take notes, you can take notes. If you don't want to take notes, you can take notes. Am I bothering you today? Oh. Some of y'all look like that cow looks at a new gate. How are we going to get out of here, right? I want you to share your faith. This is the whys, the hows, and what you're supposed to do because you're saved today. Number one, your circle of love, just as a reminder, they need good news. Amen. For Christians... Just like myself, your family, your circle of love, your people that you work with eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, they see you, the people that you go to school with, they know you're good, you're bad, you're ugly. If it's like me, my family's seen the worst of me, they've seen the best of me. Amen. Nobody's a saint in this room. Give me a good amen. amen. And so family's a little bit tougher because they've seen us when we are at our worst. That's why you need to live an attractive life. So your life needs to be attractive. The Bible says you're salt and light. Amen. Amen. And, and so salt makes things flavorful. It makes things tasty. So when you get around them, they get hungry. <laughs> they, they want what you have. Light expels darkness. And so you light up the room when you walk in because that's what light does. You need to be so attractive with your life that when people look at you, they say, I want to know the God that you know. I, what, yes. Why do you have peace and yes. I don't? Yes. Why do you have joy and I don't right now with all this crisis? Why is everybody afraid of COVID and you're not? That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Because we're not watching the news like you. And Jesus, you're right. so much. Yes. Everybody's all scared. Extreme mission Jesus gave us. 
And he gave us to the death to do this to the very end of our lives. If you're still breathing, you're supposed to do this. Mark chapter 16 on the screen, the amplified version, which means it's a little bit louder, right? No, it doesn't. You're only listening to me. Amplified (laughs) means something different, but it means you can say it out loud. On three, you haven't had any fun all day. We're going to say the scripture out loud, proclaim it. The gospel needs to be proclaimed. Let's do it in church first. On three, ready? On three. One, two, three, go. And he said to them, go into the world and preach and publish openly the good news, the gospel, to every creature of the whole human race. I noticed that Jesus didn't suggest this. And if you want to, if the sun's out today, if it's not, you know, they're not looking at you, mean, no, this is a command. Our, our captains told us to do something, amen? We need to take higher ground. We need to go proclaim the gospel. Do whatever it takes. It was a revolutionary idea to do this, what Jesus said, because the Jewish people weren't used to this. They were their own sect, their own deal. But Jesus said, you're going to go into all the world and preach the gospel. It was a new idea for everyone to hear this today. And so Jesus said, enter their world, go leave the church, and come back to the church, but leave and, and reach people for Jesus. In other words, enter their world. Do you know how Jesus entered people's world? He did it with love and compassion. He, whenever he walked upon a problem, he didn't say, you know, I ain't got time to talk to the hand, I ain't got time. No, he, he would meet people's needs. And he gave us a picture of what our life should be about. Amen. And how we should help people, how we should love people, and then how we should enter their world. Amen. I don't want you to golf clap on this one. I want you to do that. In a moment, I'm going to tell you right now how many people have been saved at Living Faith Church. And this includes outreaches. It includes our Saturday outreach that we feed groceries, which actually is taking place this week that you can participate. See Mark uh, and see Annabelle. Mark, Mark is here. And see him. He'll be our point man about how I can help on Saturday morning bring groceries to people and help people today. But we'll do, we do that. This includes everything. It includes Living Faith. It includes our online audience. So don't go off that. Salvations today, and we're not finished yet. 130 people have come to Christ. Thank you for not golf clapping. And for those of you that didn't clap, amen. May a thousand camel flies infest your armpits. And your belly button, too, on top of that. Next time you should clap. That's, that's God's miracle, right? Boy, is he mad? No, I'm fine today. I need to get right. Amen. You're on mission with God because God really, really, really loves people. Yes. He really does. But because he really loves people, hear, hear me, he, there's this place called hell, and it's real. That's right. Hell is not this imaginary place, and we're not going to go off. And people without Christ in their heart will go to hell. That's why John 3, 16, not on the screen, but in your heart, for God so loved the world. Amen. God, God loved the, that whomever believeth in him, they, they, they wouldn't go to hell, they wouldn't perish over and over um, but if they believed in him, they would have eternal life. Amen. And they would live forever with Jesus. Right. That simple message of Jesus loving us today and how we would know him. Jesus doesn't send anybody to hell. There's this one person that told me, how can I um, love a God that, that um, would send somebody to hell? I, I'm not going to love a God that would send somebody to hell. Well, well neither would I. I wouldn't love anybody. Are you all hearing me today? I, I couldn't love God. If, if, if God doesn't send anybody to hell. We send ourselves to hell because we pay for our own sins. And we choose to do that. So I brought a little uh, illustration for you today. And this is my goldfish. He represents just um, people that are next door to you. People that are in your family. That are far away from Jesus. That... They don't know Jesus. He represents that fish. He lives in his own little bowl. And um, let me see if I can do this right. So. Oh. You got this. He's um, Mr. Goldfish. This is your last day. Yeah. You're, you're not going to live anymore. And you know, I am. Uh, just see him breathing, and, and I'm trying to show you guys because he's kind of small. And it's terrible that he's dying. He's dying right now. 
He, he's literally dying. He's taking his last breath. He's trying to do that. He's trying to live. Uh, you're going to be, you're, you're not, you're going to, tonight you're not going to be able to go to sleep because he died on stage. Yeah. Yeah. Does anybody want me to rescue him? Yes. 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 Now some of you, I felt the tension in the room over this little fish that costs 40 cents at PetSmart. It costs 40 cents. I got your attention. You're awake now. You're not mad anymore. You're not mad anymore because I saved the fish. Amen. Some of y'all are more concerned about this fish than you are about your next door neighbor. That you know it's on his own to a grave and he's going to die or she's going to die and they don't know Jesus and they're far away from Jesus. Amen. Some of you have family members that represent that fish yes. and they're going to go off to a Christless eternal uh, hell uh, and, and be damned forever because they don't know Jesus. Right. And I rescued that fish because you appealed to me yes. and I want you to rescue people with me. Yes. People are with me. In a boat like that, and you know, they're outside and they're going to die without Jesus, right? right? What can we do, amen? There's powerful prayer that can take place in your life to reach people. Right now, you may not know what to say to your circle of love, your family, those that love you, those that you love them. You may not know because they've seen the, how can I talk to my family? They, they've seen me when I'm a hypocrite. Well, join one more person, amen? Amen. Yeah, you're a hypocrite, they're a hypocrite. And if I ever came to church, say, the church would cave in and fall, the walls would cave, you know. Well, it hasn't fallen in, fell in yet, amen? It hasn't collapsed yet. We're all the same person here. Nobody's perfect in this church, right? And that being said, you can start off with prayer. Pray, God, help me to reach my family. Help me to reach my loved one, my mother, my father, whatever it might be, your son, your daughter today that are far away from God. Begin with prayer, and then, Lord, give me an opportunity to share Jesus. Or, let somebody else go, Lord, but I'm setting it up for them right, right now, Lord, that they would come and hear about Jesus. Right where they're at today, right? Amen. Amen. Unbelievable. The second thing that you need to do is realize this. The urgency, of course, value every person you encounter. Yes. Amen. Yes. You are a person of value. Yes. Amen. And every person that you encounter is a person of value. Amen. Yeah, they are. They are. And so you add value to people when you meet them. Well, you don't know the people that I deal with, Pastor. Now, we share our faith. You don't have to totally agree with the way that they're living and doing. But you do have to try to understand them. And you'll only do that when you spend time in prayer. That neighbor that you don't like, that relative that causes you grief, I know this for a fact. If you will pray for them, you'll understand them better. And your heart will move towards them. You're, you don't have to be their best friend, but you can not understand them through prayer. Do you understand that? With me? It's right. He's got this. We live in a toxic world. It's getting worse. Republicans are hating Democrats, right? Uh, red people are hating yellow people, purple people. African American people are hating Caucasian people, amen. amen. But the followers of Jesus don't have that liberty. Amen. We're to love everyone. Do you understand amen. that? Amen. They may not uh, agree with you politically. Do you know that the hate is worse than ever in our culture? Yes. That's right. And so we need to be strong in our convictions. I'm not going to do that, but I still can love them. Amen. amen. You're not called to be, listen to me, ugly. And argumentative in our culture. I know it's hard right now, but listen to me right now. Amen? Amen. God's people are called to love. Love, love, love. Even our enemies, the Bible says. Amen. Not to be argumentative. And love never fails. How can it be Jesus that has it within him to say, love your enemies when he's on a cross? Or say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And that's your prayer right now if you don't understand what, what they're doing to you. Amen. Because God is good. And Paul told us not to look out for our own interests. All of myself, me, myself, and Irene, right? <laughs> uh, Y'all don't know that. <laughs> Amen. But we should look out for the interests of others. Look at the scriptures with me. In Philippians, he wrote to the Philippi church. He said, don't do, don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do it because you're proud. Instead, be humble. Value others more than yourself. 
None of you should look out for your own good. Each of you should look out for the good of others. As you deal with one another, you should act and you should think as Jesus did. Yeah, Jesus had a high IQ. Amen. Spiritual IQ, right? There's something about reflecting somebody and imitating them that's distinguished, a mirror, a reflection that you want to look like them. So you put that, that picture of that cover girl, whoever it might be, lady, today, and you try to make yourself look like her. Come on, I'm picking on everybody today. <laughs> you might not have the same attributes for a lot of reasons. You ain't got their money. Give me a good hint. Yeah. But we're, we're told to look like Jesus. So put Jesus on that mirror as you fix yourself up and say, how can I reflect Jesus with the same attitude and thought pattern that he did today? That's a pretty tall order, isn't it? That's a big thing. To act like Jesus? How am I going to do that? Well, you can if you're born again. If you're a follower of Jesus, you have the same thing within you. You have the precious Holy Spirit within you that would teach you to be humble. Amen. To allow you to be humble, not yeah. proud. Amen. To love other people, to have compassion, because the same spirit that resided within Christ is in you today. Amen. 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 So you can love yeah. instead of hate. Amen. Instead of being proud, you can be humble. Lay down your desire to be right. Lay down your desire to it's about me. Lay down and become like Jesus, the Lamb of God that laid down his life and was sacrificed for many and became Jesus. Amen. Amen. For us today. Lay down so you can have life. Today. Amen. amen. Yes. Pick up Jesus. Amen. As you do that. When you share your faith, you don't have to be like them. Amen. 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 But you can, but you, you, you're supposed to like them. <laughs> you don't have to like what they do, but you're supposed to like them. Yes. I know it's tough to hear this today. Amen. amen. I've never won an enemy to Christ by arguing with them. Right. I've never won an enemy to Christ by fighting with them, right. by showing my point of view politically. Amen? Amen. We don't do that. We lead, we, we, we lead people right. We value them today. We lead people to Jesus. He's all about, don't lead them to a presidential candidate. Lead them to Jesus. Because I guarantee you that presidential candidate, like I do, and you do, they have baggage. Right. And the media is going to expose that. I'm glad I'm not running for president. How about you? <laughs> Thank God. Let's, Jesus is our president today. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Amen. The story of Mar Mary Magdalene. I'm about to roll a video for you. Man, I have so much fun up here. We get to do all this stuff for you. And I, and I got to do that within uh, two hours. You know what I mean? That lady said, no, no. <laughs> not me. Amen. The story of Mary Magdalene. Um, she was told at the beginning of The Chosen, and it's season one, episode one, incredible <laughs> series. If you haven't watched it, you can watch it on streams and so forth. I believe it's even on YouTube that you can watch it. Story of Mary Magdalene. Um, her father is a girl. The opening scene is her father um, is telling her the scripture of Isaiah. They didn't have Bibles at Walmart that they could buy. Dad would know scriptures of Isaiah, the Old Testament prophet, and he told this scripture to her that you're about to hear. He told her in love that this is who you are, that God knows you, he's called you by name, and God's, God can save you, has a plan for you. And so Mary goes on with her life. And the next scene in Mary's life, she's, uh, you know, just, um, she has like this immorality in her life. Becomes a prostitute, becomes a, an alcoholic. Um, it, it embellishes a little bit of story. She has demons in her. The Bible does say this of her, that Jesus cast out seven devils out of her life. But I want you to notice how he cast the devils out. It wasn't a great deliverance service. It's incredible the way it speaks of it. This scene that, that we're about to see, she's at this bar, and she's really wanting alcohol. And the bartender says, I don't know how to help you anymore. This isn't going to help you. And a man in a brothel comes up to her and tells her, hey, why don't we go, baby? Let's go spend some time. You know, come on. And uh, she rejects him because she wants the bottle. She wants that comfort of the, the alcohol in her system. And that man that wanted her as a prostitute tells her this. He says, I didn't want you anyway. You stink. And he walks away. There's another man that approaches her. And she may smell. She may see. But he still desires to love her. And you'll see that man right there on the screen. Let's watch it. It's incredible. You'll love this scene. Mary. Mary of Magdala.
says the Lord who created you. people and the devil comes out of them. Because that's, right. that's what light does. It exposes Amen. all darkness. Amen. And then I think we've had it wrong all these years. Amen. Amen. Jesus never stops pursuing the people that you value. We should value every person that we encounter yes. as Jesus did. Amen. A person that was married five times and was lit shack and still the lady at the well. Amen. Mary Magdalene, he still pursues her. Pursue, the, pursue people the right way. Isaiah, the 43, the scripture. Here we go. Amen. It says this on the screen. Amen. On the screen, it says this. This is what, that, what Jesus said. This is what Mary's father would tell her as a young child. Descendants of Jacob, the Lord created you and he made you who you are. Now he says to you, do not be afraid. I have rescued you. You belong to me. The same way we rescued this fish, God wants to rescue your loved ones today, the people that are far away, you belong to God. Amen. I have called you by name and you are mine. Amen. Amen. You're mine, Joe. You're mine. God, you're mine. Soon, you're mine, baby. Amen. Because you're praying for your circle of love and you value your circle of love and you value every encounter, God's coming after people. He's pursuing them. Yes. He's going to pursue them in their trouble, in their mind, when they're not right in their heart today. He loves every person. He says, you're mine, you're mine, you're mine, and nobody can take you away from me. Amen. He's coming for you, and he's not flinching. Are you glad? Amen. He's not going to look back. He's coming right for people today, amen, and he loves them. Why don't we do this just for a moment? And I, I just feel that, Lord, we, we, got a, we got a little bit a tore up over a fish a moment ago. But if God values every person you encounter, at this very moment, there are people on your heart that are far away from God. See, a couple of years ago, there was this precious girl that came to our church, and her sister was far away from God. And her sister was really far away from God. There was trouble with this and that, but she began to pray. And then she began to live a life attractive, that my life can be just, my life can be a light for your life. And you, you know the story. She came to Jesus. Amen. And now both sisters are in our church. Amen. Amen. God is not a respecter of people. The same Jesus that answered that prayer can answer your prayer. Amen. Right now, God, in this holy moment, this time, Lord, we pray for our family that's far away, that daughter that's not right, that son that may be far away from God. I'm hooking up with you right now. I'm agreeing in faith. Are you praying? Amen. Yes, Lord, with all my heart, Lord, I agree. They agree with my prayer. I agree with theirs. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Touch people, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, Lord. God answers prayer. He hears your prayer. Amen. Some of y'all really prayed. Amen. Yes. God's going to move. Amen. The third final principle is this. Choose the right approach. Yes. Your actions speak louder than your words. Are you with me? Amen. When, when you see um, a loved one, when a loved one sees your, your transformation, it speaks big time. Amen. What if I've ruined my testimony because I've done this? Yes. I'm so thankful for the 99 time Jesus allows us to come back to him. Yes. Start living right. Yes. You have a do-over today. Amen? Amen? You can live right today. Amen? Amen? You Share your love before you connect with people, yes. before you correct them. Yes. Share love with them before you want to correct them. Connect with them. Amen. What is it that they like? What is it that they love? 
you, there, there's probably 1% of something that they do that you like. The 99%, they're living evil, they're doing all this and that. You don't need to worry about that. That's what most Christians do. That's why they don't come to Jesus, because we major on the whole bunch of mess that they're involved in. But that one thing, they may smile good. <laughs> They may love people. They may have a heart towards people. I don't know, but there's one thing. Would you major on that as God's child? Yes. And focus on that today. In other words, be positive. Don't be negative. Amen. Amen. Don't say this. You're, you're going to hell. <laughs> They're liable to do something with their hand and uh, show you uh, not the peace sign. If you tell them that, right? <laughs> That's why people, they, of course, they're going to go to hell. But that's why you've been shown to be positive and love them in that 1% that they're doing that's right, to love on that 1% and meet them there. That's why I think Peter gave us the right way to do it. 1 Peter 3.15, the Living Bible says this, quietly trust yourself to Christ your Lord. That means they're going to see that, hey, that person's trusting God. And if anybody asks what you believe, why are you trusting God during this time of hell? During this time of uproar, this time when all this stuff's happening in, in America. What? Why are you trusting? And then you're ready to tell them, I, I have peace. I have hope in my life. I'm different because of this. And then it says to do it this way. Not with a bullhorn, <laughs> but do it in a gentle and respectful way. Yeah, isn't that good? Amen. Be patient. But not pressing. Come on, do it today, do it today. Be patient with people. Second Timothy on the screen, 2.23. Do not get involved in foolish, ignorant arguments. Yeah. Mario, I'm glad you said that. No, the Apostle Paul said that, right? So get mad at him, right? That start only. You don't want to be the cause of somebody leaving this church because you fought them. Because you upset them. Amen. You walk clean. Amen. And it's big time. Have a clean heart. Have clean hands. Amen. There's endless disputes and arguments that we can have with every one of us today. But they're going to distract people from knowing Jesus if you do that. Amen. I'm going to go on. Amen. The Lord's servants. I'm going to just read God's word. Is that okay? Yes. Because that's probably best we do that instead of watching news all the time. The Lord's servants must not quarrel, but must be kind to everyone. They must be able to teach effectively and be patient with difficult, difficult, very difficult people. Bad relationships right there. They really hinder our service to the Lord. Amen. Yeah, they really do. They, they should gently teach those who oppose the truth. That's the Bible, not a political environment that's charged right now. Perhaps God will change people's hearts because you love them and you didn't argue with them. You prayed for them and you love that 1% in their life. And then they will believe the truth, right? Amen. Praise God. Amen. I'll talk to you a yeah. Yeah, there, there's progress to be made, church, right, everybody? And if your life is on mission, you're called to be an ambassador for Christ. Show up for Jesus. Amen. We represent Jesus on this planet. Yeah. No, but there's not a plan B. The Navy SEALs aren't coming. There's not a rescue mission that's coming from the, you know, the, the military bases. God, you, God uses us. No, Jesus chose you as his followers to go into the world and, and be light and salt to people today. So Jesus created space for people to have conversation. This is how you do it. Have the right approach today. Do you know that Jesus was asked... 307 questions. Somebody say 307. 307. In the Gospels, he was asked over and over questions. Over and over, he's asked questions. And do you know how many questions he answered? He only answered 100. Of the, of the 183 people that asked him these questions, a couple, a, couple, a couple of them asked, a couple of them, 183 asked questions. He only answered eight of them in his life. Three years of ministry. So you know what that tells me about Jesus? Can you help me with the hard ones? <laughs> that he must have listened more than he spoke. That's right. Because when you listen to people, they hear you hear their heart, you hear what they're going through, you have a conversation with them, that you're you don't have all the answers. And if you don't have all the answers, that's okay. You can go find the answer. You can go get the answer. 
But out of 183, when he was asked those questions directly, he only answered eight of them. Isn't that incredible about our Jesus? Yeah. Amen. Don't you just love him even more for doing that? Amen. Yeah. There are four pictures of God. This is where I really need you to take notes. Don't cross your arms. Let's come on. Let's get, let's get engaged, church, today. Amen. These are the ones that are extra notes for the people that will get a swimming pool, a jacuzzi in heaven. Because blessed are those that take extra notes at Living Faith. God will bless you today. There are four pictures of God. Three are wrong and only one is right today. That's why when you see somebody that's real far away from God in a foreign land, like how are they ever going to know about Jesus, that Turkish goat herder on the other side of Mount Ararat that is just herding goats? How is anybody ever going to go to him? How is that person so far away in China that never heard about Jesus? How are they going to? I guarantee you everyone is searching for God. Yeah. That's why when you go to this remote village, you'll see them have this stick in the ground, in the mud, and they stuck it in there, and they're bowing before it. Or they're looking up towards the sun, and they're saying that that's a God or the moon God. And people are looking for God. Yeah. They're just not looking the right way. Right. People in America with the gospel saturated in this country, they're looking for God, but they're not looking the right way. So these are four ways that you can share Jesus with them and go in knowing this is what I can do to share Jesus with my neighbor, with my loved one. Number one is this. Amen. Don't miss the real picture. Number one is a locked gate. And the locked gate is, God, I, I can't I can't be reached. I, I'm too far away. I'm, a, you know, you give up on me. If I get to church, the, 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 the roof's going to fall. Right? They're that sort of thinking. And that that's why Jesus came. Right, everybody? He came so he could love people and show them the right way. Right, everybody? Amen. The next one is this, a garbage can. And they think I'm not good enough. I was there. How about you? Amen. I'm not good enough. God's mad at me. I've done all these wrong things. How could I come to a holy place? How could I come to a, a church? How, how could I even come to Jesus? Amen. Well, God's not mad at people. He's madly in love with them. Amen. God's not mad at people. God's not mad at your next door neighbor. God's not mad at anybody. Amen? Yeah. The, the next one. Wrong again here. Endless ladder. I can't get good enough. It, it's just, I'm going to give up. I'm going to give up. I'm going to give up and I can't ever make God happy. And that's out of human relationship and that's not godly relationship. Yeah. And so, you can be good enough only through the blood of Jesus. Finally, this one. This is the right answer. Amen? We need to see this picture. It's a door, and Jesus is knocking on the door of a heart. And if we would just open our heart's door, Jesus would come in. Amen. And all of us can go at those four approaches today. The most important thing that we'll ever do as a follower of Jesus, pray, that's good. The most important thing that you'll ever do as a task, as God moves you, as a follower of Jesus, is share Christ with people. Yeah. Did you know that today? Amen. That's why Jesus died, so people could live again. Right, everybody? And so that's why I end with this scripture right now. In Revelation 3.20, the Message Bible, look at me. I stand at the door and knock. And this is for some of you even in this room or on screen right now. If you hear me call, open the door. And right now, Jesus saying, come on, man. Let me and you live that way long enough. Change needs to come. I'm pursuing you right now, just like I did Mary. I'm coming after you in the right way. I'll come in and I'll have dinner with you today. Amen. Amen. Now lift your hands for the blessing right now. Come on, everybody. 100%. We're, we're about to end. Amen. May you receive the power of the Holy Spirit today. May he fill you afresh and in you right now. May the Holy Spirit baptize you afresh with boldness. Baptize this fresh again. Uh, baptize this church with the infilling of the Holy Spirit on screen and in the sanctuary of Living Faith Church. So we become bold witnesses for Christ. In the name of Jesus, I see churches arising right now out of our midst in the name of the Lord. They may not look like a church, like this church, but they can be in your living room as you share Jesus. They can be under a shade tree. They can be in the marketplace, at your workplace, during lunch, whatever it might be. In the name of Jesus, you have Jesus to share. Now boldly go share it and change the world. In the name of Jesus, do you receive the word of God? Do you obey the word of God? In the name of Jesus. And then remain standing as we pray today. Worship team, you can come up and help me. In the name of Jesus, as we conclude, and thank God for you today. Let's bow our heads before a...
a holy God and a good Father that loves us. Heavenly Father, I thank you for a wonderful summer season. I thank you that you're calling us each in this room to make a difference, Lord, today. Thank you we reach a, hope, a, hurt, a hurt world today with hope today. I thank you, God, that healing can come in our hands as we approach people. We're eager to share the gospel because you loved us, God. How could we not love other people? Thank you, Father. Place an ambassador spirit within people in this room and on screen today. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Help me now, God, the biggest prayer. Help me to see people like you see them, yes. including the people that are difficult in my life. Yes. Come on. Yeah. There's some enemies that you have, and you may not be able to even witness to them because of what they've done in the past or what they've done. I'm speaking to somebody but you can begin to pray for them. That God would help them. They might be in a different setting right now because of what they did it was so awful. But God can still God still loves them. And as an ambassador for Jesus, because you're looking up today, not looking at them. Thank you, God. Touch their hearts today. I'm helping you pray. Bless them. Let them know Jesus like I do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I believe there'll be an appropriate time that you'll be able to reach out to them and say, I forgive you, I love you, and I need you to know Jesus like I do today. Thank you, Father. As I continue to pray, and maybe you've had trouble with forgiveness, and the reason why you have trouble with forgiveness a moment ago is because the one that was, is supposed to forgive you right now, you haven't asked them to forgive you. Amen. You can forgive people today, but it takes God. Amen. God needs to forgive you today. If you're far away from God today and you want to know forgiveness, you need to say yes to Jesus. You're on screen. You're, you're, you're here at Living Faith. Let Jesus uh, become your Savior at this very moment today. If you're in this room today, in the sanctuary of Living Faith, I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm going to ask to see your hand slightly. You can lift it up and say, that's me. I'm far away from God. Just lift your hand slightly. I won't embarrass you, but I'll note it. If that's you today, you want to say yes to Jesus. Yes, yes. Beautiful family. About four of you, five of you lifted your hand. This counts, amen. Thank God for the five people that lifted their hand. At Living Faith, you don't pray alone. We pray with you. You're my brother, you're my sister. We pray a prayer like this on screen. You lifted an emoji hand, that's good. Yeah. We lift our hands and we say this prayer. If you prayed it, if you lifted your hand, pray it out loud. Amen. Loud enough that you can hear it in your own ear. Say this. Father in heaven. Father in heaven. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Oh Jesus, how I need you. Oh Jesus, how I need you. Wash me. Wash me. Cleanse me. Cleanse me. Your blood, Jesus. Your blood, Jesus. Makes me whiter than snow. It makes me whiter than snow. It's rewriting my story. It's rewriting my story. It's going to change my history. It's going to change my history. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for thank you for the blood of Jesus. It cost you something, Jesus. How could I not live for you now the rest of my life? Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God, for the believers in this room. Come on, living faith, celebrate you. For those that open their hands on screen or here, there's a booklet that we want to give you called The New Believer's Handbook. It's going to be found at our Welcome Center. We really want you to have that book. There'll be a great leader there that will give you that book or pray over it. We want you to have that. Amen? Amen. And do that. So the second thing as I conclude is this. And I'm going to conclude and Jill Tuttle's going to come, I believe. Uh, She's right here. I'm standing in for her. Okay. So Jill's, uh, Mark Tuttle's going to uh, uh, share a little bit and receive the, the offering today. And we'll, we'll, we'll do that today. But here's what I want to do real quick. It's real important that we share with you on the platform. Water baptism is going to happen immediately after service. We've been preparing it. The water's warm and sterilized. Amen. It's going to feel good when you get in it. Amen. Those of you who prepared yourself, you brought clothing. You say, you really, I, I really want to get baptized today hearing this. And my heart's in you. Well, the people of Living Faith love you so much that they brought, um, they brought towels for you. They brought clothing for you that's dark. That's We have one size fits all t-shirts. Amen. And it's found right on the back table right outside this door. 
I, I want to tell you something real quick. This is new life. If you receive Christ for the first time, you know what they would do in the early church? Immediately they would get baptized. They would go to the River Jordan and get baptized. Um, and their sins would be whiter than snow. So there's no better time. This is it right now. Jesus is ask, asking you right now, would you identify with me in showing the world that your old life is done and a new life is rising? And so there's plenty of clothes back there. If, if you need help, a, a great leader will be. I need one leader to be back there to help. Amen. So who can that be? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. I, I know you're not a leader, but I mean, we'll help you. We'll help you if you want. Who can be back there? Kathy Rodriguez, you can be back there. You're, you just make sure that if they need anything, you're there to help them. So we've got a good person leading in that way. The rest of us, amen, that want to be water baptized, please be water baptized today. Get ready. Get immediately ready. And the last thing is this, as Mark shares. Mark, there's a microphone. Do you have a microphone here? Oh, I hit my head, Mark. <laughs> there you go. The last thing is this. It's Paleta Sunday. Amen. Thank God for um, Juan and B. Gonzalez for a lot of reasons. They worked overtime. They've done a lot. Thank you. And we've got some topics for the living area. Paleta Sunday's happening. It's in the uh, cafe area. Keep those paletas in the cafe area. Can we get it? Because they work real hard cleaning chairs and keeping it open, but that's that's okay too. If one seat's in here, we won't scream at you. We'll just escort you out. Is that cool? <laughs> All right. God bless you. Something else? Yes. And Mark's going to talk about that. Go ahead, Mark. All right. Thank you, uh, Pastor Living Faith. Just a little way of explanation. Um, Jill is in the nursery loving on your children. Um, we had to do a last minute audible. Um, and so she said, I'll go ahead and take the, the, the nursery, but I need you to come and talk about our ministry. Uh, you see the picture there? It says thank you. And what that's about is, um, those of you who've been around know, um, just before the school year ended, we, we got in contact with a man named Frank, and he, said, and he helped us with our last outreach uh, to the high school. And he's been working um, from the inside at the high school, reaching the children. And he asked, can we use your student center? So I guess pastor went to the board, and the board said yes. So they over the summer, every Wednesday, and I, I, I thank uh, Sabrina, who's not here today, because she came over, was unlocking, so they could go ahead and, and use that. So this is their way of saying thank you. Um, this is a text that Frank sent to Jill. It, um, it says, sorry for the late response. I had a busy day and barely got home a few minutes ago. We meet on Wednesdays and testimonies from the kids have been, they knew of God and Jesus, but they didn't truly understand. But since coming, they've been learning who Jesus is and what it means to be a Christian. Praise the Lord. And and a follower of Jesus. One student even told us they knew about the Bible, but didn't know how to talk about it to other people. But we have helped them to understand the Bible more, as well as how to bring it up to others at the school and in their home. So the impact it is having has been amazing to see their transformation through the few months we've been with them and hear them say they're praying more and reading more and actually understanding it now. Uh, my heart is for the youth to reach more teens and to grow uh, this even more and make impact not only on the school, but the community in the Marbach area. Uh, that's the same dream we have, and that's why we work with uh, the youth we are working with to train these youth to grow in their faith, teach them the word about Jesus, and to one day do what we are doing with